It's 2020 and we've got RGB pretty much everywhere. So why not mouse pads? This right here is the Vixing oversized RGB gaming mouse pad and it measures 800 millimeters long by 400 millimeters wide, which is big. And in my opinion, that's a good thing because who wants to run out of mouse pad when they're gaming? So the bigger, the better. But what that also means is that you can fit your keyboard and your mouse on it at the same time. Why do you need a mouse pad for your keyboard? Well, you don't, but in my opinion, it just looks awesome. When you get everything set up on the mouse pad, I just think it looks good on the desk along with your system. So obviously the highlight feature with this mouse pad is the RGB lighting. So let's talk about that first. The entire outer edge of the pad has this clear plastic tube that connects to an RGB lighting control box in the top left corner. So once you connect the USB power cable to the control box, the lights should turn on right away. And if they don't, all you gotta do is press and hold the multifunction button for a few seconds and that'll get them to turn on. And that's all it takes to get this set up and running. There's no drivers, uh, no software to install. It's all just plug and play. And then to control the lighting effects, all you gotta do is press that same multifunction button to cycle through the different colors and effects. It's that easy. Now the way the lighting works is by sending light beams out from either side of the control box and then that light just travels along the outer edge in that clear plastic tube. So there's no individual LEDs here running along the perimeter, kind of like you would expect with something like a LED light strip. It doesn't work like that. And what that means is that this half of the mouse pad over here is dimmer than this half because it's further away from the light source. But the effect isn't super strong. It is noticeable, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's that bad that you've got um, different sort of levels of light on either side of the mouse pad. It does produce this nice soft and subtle glow. And I think that's a good thing because you don't want super bright light coming off all over the mouse pad and kind of distracting you where your mouse and keyboard is. Um, that's sort of my opinion about it. It does do a nice job and I think it looks good overall. All. And here's a look at all the different lighting options available. In terms of build quality, overall it's pretty good. The lighting control box feels a little cheap and plasticky, but the surface itself is good. It feels a lot like a SteelSeries QCK surface in my opinion. Um, maybe a little bit more on the rougher side though. And as an added bonus, it's apparently completely waterproof. I didn't test it, but I'll take the manufacturer's word on that one. Underneath we have this nice soft rubber that kind of keeps it stuck to your desk and it works well. I didn't see it moving around or anything like that while I was gaming on it. And in terms of comfort, it's got this nice soft padding so resting your hands your wrists your arms on it is pretty comfortable even for long periods of time one thing that's awesome to see here on a mouse pad that's kind of more on the budget side is that it does have stitched edges all the way around we have these nice stitched edges they're not as well done as some of the ones that i've seen on other mouse pads but still stitched edges are a must and i would always take some kind of stitching over no stitching at all so that's a good thing Gaming on this surface is good. My Razer Viper Ultimate tracks perfectly on it. And I happen to notice that it's a very fast surface. It's a lot faster than what I'm used to, which is a HyperX Fury S Speed Edition, despite the fact that that mouse pad's designed around speed and low friction. Um, still though, yeah, this is really fast. So that's an easy adjustment though. I just kind of went into the sensitivity settings and all my games and adjusted it a bit and everything was fine. One thing that I wanna mention is that when I unboxed the mouse pad and laid it out on my desk, it stayed wavy for a little longer than I was used to. Actually, maybe a lot longer than I was used to. I've had it for about a week now and it seems to have flattened out, but it took probably almost a week to completely flatten out at the extreme edges. So if you pick one of these up and it looks a little wavy for a while, just be patient and it should flatten itself out. 
So considering the price, which at the time of this recording is under 25 US dollars, I think this is a really good option for an RGB gaming mouse pad because it performs similarly to other surfaces out there that are hugely popular and more expensive like the SteelSeries QCK. So for 25 bucks, this allows you to get a good performing mouse pad with decent build quality and RGB backlighting. So I think that's a pretty good deal. The purchasing links are gonna be down in the description of this video. If you end up picking one of these up, leave us a comment and let us know what you think about it. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button on your way out and we'll see you soon.